there are other conditions. So if there are other conditions, that means you will have more than one generator. That means B, B square itself may be identity. B3 itself may be identity. Okay, so you may have different R, uh, generators with different R, uh, orders. Okay, but for cyclic group, for cyclic group, order of generator is same as order of group. This is true only for cyclic group. In other words, there will be only one generator for cyclic group. Cyclic group has only one generator. So if only one generator is there, order of the generator will be equal to order of the group. For example, if you consider G to be nth roots of unity, okay, nth roots of unity, that is e to the power i 2 pi by n into, so i 2 pi by n, e to the power i 4 pi by n and so on up to 1. The last one is 1. If you take this nth roots of unity, okay, so this is a set of nth roots of unity. And then use just multiplication as your binary operation. So binary operation is simply multiplication. These are complex numbers. You use multiplication of complex numbers. This is a group. And this is a cyclic group. Because it, if you consider this as your b, this is b square, this is b cube, etc. b power n is equal to 1. Correct? So this is a cyclic group. This is a cyclic group. And what is the generator? Generator is e power i 2 pi by n. What is the order of the group? n. Order of this element is also n. Because this is cyclic group. Correct. That is not true for non-cyclic groups. The order of the generator is in general not the order of the group for any arbitrary group. Only for cyclic groups, this is true. Let me just uh, give an example or uh, construct a non-cyclic group. Let me consider an example. G is equal to 1 minus 1 i minus i and the binary composition is usual multiplication. Is this a group? Is this a cyclic group? There are four elements in this. Is this a cyclic group? What is the generator? i is the generator? What is i square? i cube? minus i, i power 4 plus 1. So i is a generator. Can uh, minus i be a generator? It can also be a generator, right? You can choose any one of them because if 1 is a generator, I can always take b square, b cube, etc., right? So this is a cyclic group.
Can minus 1 be a generator? Minus 1 square is plus 1, minus 1 cube is minus 1. So this will be only between this and this. Correct? So if I generator is I, such that this group can be written as I, I square, which is minus 1, I cube, which is minus I, and I power 4, which is 1. What is identity? Identity element of this group is 1. Correct? Okay. <coughs> now, supposing if I take group of order 4, if I take group of order 4, that means I am going to have E, A, B, C. There are four elements. One of them should be identity, so I am already calling it as E. Now, one possibility is A, A square, A cube, A power 4 is E. Then that is a cyclic group. Is there any other possibility? That is the question. Cyclic group, we do not have any problem, right? It is already for every uh, group of any order, a cyclic group can be formed. Is there any other option for this to become a group? So, let us look at the multiplication table E A B C E A B C. So, first row I can fill it. This column also I can fill it. Now, I have to fill this 3 by 3. Now, supposing if I fill a square, A square as identity, B square as identity, C square as identity. Okay? That means each one of them is its own inverse. A square is identity, B square is identity, C square is identity means each one is its own inverse. So, I can write this as identity. Now, I have B and C. Okay? Now, A with B, if I call it as C, A with C, if I call it as B, and then B to B is also an identity, and B with A, A with B is C, so I will put this also as C, and B with C as A, and C with A, so, C with C is also an identity. Now, C with A, if I call it as B, C with B, if I call it as A, I can, I can form a group. That means, I, I do not have elements which are outside. But you may be wondering why, how I am writing this. Okay. So, I think uh, <coughs> I should tell you this secret. There is a, a very important theorem called rearrangement theorem. Rearrangement theorem states that every row and every column of group multiplication table, I will shorthand write it this way. should have every group element every group element once and only once okay so this is called rearrangement theorem so, if I take a column, I should have, I should accommodate all elements at least once and I should have only once. So, this is a very powerful theorem which will allow me, now I know this and this I fixed, 
Then here I cannot get B, so I should get C. Here I cannot get C, I should get B. Okay, so this is the trick using which I wrote this. So this is this is uh, sat uh, satisfied by all group multiplication table. Like no, no, it's generally possible for all groups. Rearrangement theorem is possible for all groups. Even non-abelian case, rearrangement theorem is true. No. Yeah, as the order increases, it is usually difficult if you do not know the elements. See, here I don't know what are these elements. If I define these elements as some numbers, then I can write group multiplication table by way of multiplying them. Or if I know what are those transformations, I can multiply them and write the group multiplication table. This exercise of asking a very general set to be a group is difficult as you go along uh, higher and higher order groups. That I agree. And also, you might have noticed that all cyclic groups are abelian. Correct? Because a square a cube is same as a cube a square. It is a power 5. So all cyclic groups are abelian. Okay? So that is uh, an additional remark. It's not very, it's very obvious, but still I just, for completeness sake, I made that remark. So now if you see, this is different from cyclic group. Now what happens in this case? You have, so in this particular case, I cannot say there is only one generator. How many generators are there? A, an element is called a generator if some power of it is equal to identity. Here we have three generators. What is the order of A? Two. A square is identity. Order of B is also 2, order of C is also 2. So, in this group, we have 3 generators. A, B and C. So order of A is equal to 2, order of B is also equal to 2, order of C is also equal to 2. So this is not a cyclic group, okay? It is a group which has three generators and none of the order of these generators is order of the group because that if order of the group is equal to order of the generator, then that will become a cyclic group. So this is a non-cyclic group. Non-cyclic group. But you can notice this group is also abelian. This group is also abelian. So we have order 1 only cyclic group possible. Order 2, only cyclic group is possible. Order 3, only cyclic group is possible. Order 4, a non-cyclic group is possible, but that's also abelian. Order 5, once again only cyclic group is possible. So the first non-abelian group has an order 6. You cannot have a non-abelian group with order less than or equal, less than 6, okay? So, a general rule can be said that all groups of order less than 6 are abelian. You may have a group of order more than 6 that is also abelian. But the first non-abelian group is of the order of 6. Okay? So this is the <coughs> construction of groups with 
different orders. As I told you, if you want to write E, A, B, C, D, okay, it turns out that that's only cyclic group is possible for that. We will see why after we define some more concepts of subgroups and things like that. And if you have five, six, seven, the conditions become more and more complicated and such a general classification is not very easy. Now after getting a kind of a hang on the definition of a group, let us try to classify these groups based on the order. Okay? So, <coughs> generally groups can be divided into two categories. One category I will call it as discrete groups. And the other category, continuous groups. Discrete groups and continuous groups. Within the discrete groups, I can further categorize finite groups and infinite groups. Finite groups and infinite groups. Continuous groups can also be categorized into two further categories. Compact, compact groups and non-compact groups. Okay, so this is a general classification of the groups that we come across in, <coughs> in the whole of this group theory. Finite groups have got the order of the group to be finite number, 10, 15, it may be 1000, but it's finite. In finite group, order of the group is infinite. Order of the group is always infinite for continuous groups, but here